these, as you can tell, kind of filming in a different spot. This is actually a very old Singer sewing machine. It still works. I still use it. It's beautiful. It has a whole fold out table. And if you guys are interested, I'll show you guys the ins and outs of it. Um, it's a beautiful piece of machinery. And it was my great grandmother's. So, but anywho, this, when, when I first put the poll out, I'll put it right here again, just in case you guys are wondering. When I put that poll out, asking you guys, you know, what would you like to see? I got some great responses. And the biggest response was, I want to see the speed loom, the mini loom. And I've been super excited to get one ever since I figured out what they were. I'm like, oh my God. So you literally can put a little loom on top and secure it with some rubber bands, thread a bunch of thread through it, thread some thread through it the other way, pack it down, weave it, and you have a patch. Like you essentially made fabric, you wove fabric to create a patch. It's something that it's like, why are we, why are we not doing this anymore? Well, once I learned about that, I was like, I went down just a rabbit hole. The whole week of my life was dedicated to the history of mending. Um, you know, why mending was important and why, like, what happened to make it fall out of favor. Um different types of mending from around the world, specifically Japanese mending, invisible mending. And I really share a lot of philosophy with what the Japanese see as everything having a, a life to it. And I think I've mentioned this before, that's part of the reason why I like to buy secondhand. I've always loved the idea of something having a whole nother life or lives before I get to have my time with it. I've always loved that. So with that, it's like, okay, well, over time, especially vintage pieces, things like that, that I've had to learn with different fabrics, how to treat them. Amongst that is learning how to patch things, to mend things. I love visible mending because it specifically values not being perfect about it. And I love that because that's part of why what I like to do in my own art, in my, in my crochet, in my crafts, anything that I do. I come from it from a very organic human perspective. And everything that I make is going to have flaws. I'm not a robot. So the fact that I can visibly make mistakes, essentially, and as long as at the end of the day, it's functioning how it's supposed to function as a patch or as however I'm mending it, it's supposed to be visible. It's supposed to look like that. So what ended up happening while I was waiting on my loom to get in the mail and I'll show you I'll show you guys a little unboxing before you actually see the process when I was waiting on that to come in the mail I went to research to make sure I was prepared for this video because I've never used a speed loom I wanted to learn all that I could about it I watched tutorials read articles like I said rabbit hole I was not expecting to become this infatuated with mending things. But at the same time, I'm really not surprised. <laughs> so I essentially, as I was making my notes and really just making an outline, I wanted to make it a very organized video because this is something I haven't done as a video yet, like this format. So I really just wanted to not perfect it, but I wanted to make it something that I'd be proud of that I'd want to watch, like with anything that I make, that I would get something from. As I was looking over my notes, when I was starting to go over what I was going to talk about, 
as I was looking at my research and what my outline was, it was an essay. It was essentially, I wrote a college essay about mending. And the thing is, I just scratched the surface about just the history and everything. And I'll include some great sources below. I'm actually going to include a Google Doc of all of my sources. So if you need some further reading, if you're interested in these, these kinds of things, please go check out that Google document. I'm going to try to also link some YouTube uh, videos that I watched, um, maybe in that Google Doc. So that way it's just in one big format if any of you guys want to nerd out on this like I did. So, because I think this is also something very important for us, especially now, um, when we're wanting to try to be more sustainable and I, we're long overdue for the sustainability that we're trying to do right now. I think it's more important than ever to be able to give our clothes the longest life as possible, especially if you are buying something or you've had something that was potentially fast fashion. If you're not wanting to get rid of it because you did like it and it hasn't fallen apart yet, surprisingly, it's inevitably going to, you know ways of how to fix it. I don't support fast fashion anymore. Um, I say anymore because nobody's perfect. I, at one point in my life, did not realize where my clothes came from. You learn these things and you make the change. And luckily, I'm going to instill in my kids what sustainable options are. Our generation, especially as ultra fast fashion has become a thing, which, oh my god. Ugh. Since ultra fast fashion has become a thing, it's made sustainability and human rights even more prevalent. Because Think about all of the polluting and all of the unfair wages that were made before with all the high demand, but like quadrupled. We'll see a cut. I'll do a little unboxing so you can see what came in the kit that I bought. I'm not sponsored by the people that I bought the kit from. I just researched and found that this was the kit. That would be a great starting point for me. Could I have made better choices with it? Probably, but now I have something that I learned on that is very functional and I'm very happy about it and I'm super excited to keep doing uh, different mending techniques. I actually have some things that I thrifted that have like a stain on it or something like that, that that's the only thing wrong with it. And because of the material, they just were like, okay, well, it's permanently stained. I'm just going to get rid of it. I want to do some kind of mending techniques for those. I want to make my own patches and just make it, give it a new life. Because that that's the whole, re that's, the, that's the important thing about slow fashion, sustainable fashion. Just being more conscious as a consumer and like, you can enjoy aesthetics, but you have to be mindful of it. On another ten tangent, <laughs> I, what I did was I did, you guys are going to essentially see me learn how to do this on camera. Once I start kind of getting the hang of it, there's going to be a time lapse. And it's really interesting to see because I've already done the time lapse. Like you're, you're seeing basically, I watched back the time lapse. It's really cool seeing the process of seeing somebody learn something and seeing how much your the process, how better it gets as they're practicing. I just find that interesting. We all start somewhere. So I think it's really cool to share this experience with you on this first time that I did it. Um, this is in no means a tutorial. Um, I will eventually do a tutorial on uh, speed looms, loom mending, visible mending. I do want to delve more into that because I feel like there needs to be more content out there about it. Um, but I definitely want to get more comfortable with it. I want to become comfortable enough to be like, to be able to instruct somebody about it. So it's really cool seeing how fast I was able to catch on because it's actually really easy. One, it's a very meditative process, just like crocheting and knitting is. So I really do like that. So I'm going to 
cut to the, cut away and then you guys will see me back here to see how this turned out. I'm going to show you guys before I open this, I am going to show you what I'm going to work on. This is my dad's jacket. And as you can tell, <laughs> there's two holes all up in it. Well, his dog got into his jacket and yeah, that was the that was the result. Anyway, this one came up as probably one of the best options for a beginner because of the value of what you're getting as well as some little extras you get for the price. It was with tax around 20 US dollars from Amazon where I got it. I'm not an affiliate of Amazon. I think I have a love-hate relationship with Amazon like most people do. Mostly hate, but sometimes there ends up being some really good products on there like this. Um, and you'll see why this is actually a really good value for what you're getting, especially for a beginner when you're just starting out. Because like I said, I've never done this before. We're going to learn this together and who you're going to see me fail. You're going to see things. I'll make some notes about some takeaways on what I think. Um, some different things I may I learned along the way, all that good stuff. So we're in this together for the first time. Yeah, there's some really fun stuff in here, but first off, this is all you need to start mending. Really, you don't even need this, but I wanted specifically a speed loom. This is literally the speed loom. This is every single thing you need except for whatever you're using to actually do the mending which can be various things but usually and most commonly it's embroidery thread and this little thing and I was so excited when I saw it <laughs> that's why I started grabbing it at first and I'm like no it's not gonna make any sense to bring this up first this is a sock uh, a sock loom a mushroom sock loom and there's different kinds out there there's some that aren't so cutesy but I love mushrooms they're one of my favorite foods I love them I love mushroom motifs I have mushrooms throughout my home so that's they're fascinating to me I love to read about them this is just a simple pin cushion. You get all of this embroidery thread and honestly this is actually a pretty good dupe for DMC thread and that's actually um quite nice because as you see I think there's like 50 of these in here so I mean there's all kinds of different colors so that makes it even more exciting. I did not know that the thread was going to be that nice. For some reason um, I was 
going in the wrong direction and crisscrossing my thread for no reason because I could have swore I saw it in the video and that was not correct. So, start over number one. Oh, darn. Okay, retry number three. <laughs> oh. What I'm putting in here now is a small essay that I wrote whilst digging into information about the history of mending, and it led me into quite a bit of a rabbit hole, and I hope you guys enjoy this little bit of information in this essay format as you see me working on this loom. I deem this a brief history of mending and why we need it more than ever. Throughout history, people have repaired, mended, and altered clothing out of necessity. In a time before clothing was mass-produced, basically opposite of the clothing industry today, it was crucial to do whatever you could to make your clothes last as long as possible. Clothes weren't tossed if it had become threadbare. It was patched and used again and again and again oftentimes for multiple people in a family, especially children and hand-me-downs. During World War II, the mantra, make do and mend, was encouraged. It was broadcasted on radios, printed in magazines and posters. It was all a part of rationing what we had for war efforts. Up until the war, and even more so during, men were taught mending techniques to fix their uniforms and socks. It wasn't polarized to either sex due to it being such an important skill to have by all. It wasn't until the mid-20th century that we became more comfortable with tossing or donating unused clothes. They were much easier to get a hold of, especially post-World War II. The 1950s housewife could sew and mend, but it was starting to shift into what was unfortunately labeled as women's work, and it was seen as unmasculine to be able to have these skills, which I strongly disagree with. As manufacturing and mass production increased post-war, so did the availability of clothing. Technology such as industrial sewing machines were a common sight, and you could walk into any department store to racks upon racks of clothes for different ages, shapes, and sizes. This would continue throughout the later half of the 20th century, from the increased popularity of malls through the 80s to supermodels and into the 90s with increasing number of clothing brands, magazines, and the emergence of celebrity influence and obsession. As we get into the mid-2000s and into the 2010s, fast fashion has had been long established as the standard of clothing. In the Western world, society started to value quantity over quality. Influence culture, influencer culture, has been a huge, well, influence, for lack of a better term, on our fashion industry today. The emergence of ultra-fast fashion from the likes of Shein, Boohoo, and the likes created even more need for a closet full of cheap and disposable clothing. As you can tell, this is a terrible thing for not only the environment, but for people who have no choice but to work 60 and 70 plus hour work weeks to make barely a living wage. Many places as low as $4 US a day. It's exploitation of developing countries, and I can't help but to feel kind of icky about it, and I think we all should actually. Along with the rise of fast fashion, we have another movement fighting against it, the anti-fashion movement. People who are thrifting, who are mending, and also the growing numbers of people wanting to learn how to make their own garments, whether that be crochet, knitting, sewing, upcycling. The people that have learned where our clothes come from, and instead of ignoring it, trying to do what they can to make a difference. This is where visible mending starts to gain traction again in the West. There are full books, videos, and even blogs based on different mending techniques. Personally, as someone who prefers slow living and trying to be as sustainable as I can, I have a particular interest in Japanese mending techniques. 
The Japanese have always shared the philosophy that everything has a life, a soul, a life force, however you want to put it. The concept of matanai encompasses the idea of respecting resources and not wasting them, along with an inherent recognition of their value. Harikyo is a prime example of this philosophy. Translating to broken needle services or broken needle ceremony, Harikyo is a ceremony held February 8th in the Kanto region and December 8th in the Kansai region. This ancient ceremony of more than 400 years brings together fashion professionals, designers, dressmakers, kimono manufacturers, fashion students, as well as housewives who just like to sew, and hobbyists as well. Everyone has to express their gratitude to the needles and pins that have enabled them to create their work, as well as pray for the work ahead and ask for more skill or dexterity. Their used and broken needles are laid to rest in a block of soft tofu. It's very symbolic. It's really a gorgeous and very interesting ceremony to watch and read about. I'm going to include some further reading and information about this below, and I strongly encourage you to be able to check it out. Visible mending has been around in Japan for thousands of years. A prime example of this is sashiko. Sashiko is a Japanese form of repair and translates directly as little stabs. It's typically carried out with white cotton thread on indigo fabric. This visible mending technique has been produced in Japan for thousands of years. A great modern example of sashiko is by the in instructor and artist Mio Takayuchi. I'm going to include some pictures of Mio's work. It's truly a work of art. And I hope this little audio essay that I wrote is something that you guys can think about and see why it's so important. That concludes my research and essay, and I learned so much more than this, and I have actually found a few books that I want to read um, that, on the subject, and I strongly encourage you, if you are interested in anything that I mentioned in this, to definitely go check it out and research it and learn why this is so important that things need to have life they don't need to be disposable because being disposable is slowly killing our planet To finish these patches off, and this is like, I'm having to do kind of multiple patches on that really large tear, but I've tried overlapping the patches so that way it creates a stronger weave. And I, what I'm doing right now this one, not the best, but I'm just finishing off the top of this because otherwise you're just left with a big pocket, which is, it's a cool way to make a pocket, but I need to make a full on patch. <laughs> so that's how the top of that is going to be finished off. So. I need to do that last patch and then see up here I had kind of started it and I need to pull some of these back through the back so I'll clean that up and then all of these ends right here will get woven back into the back so <clears throat> next will be this patch and finishing this off. I'm like really, 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 really amazed by this. Like, it's so enjoyable. Um, it's almost kind of 
it's meditative. Like it's very, it's a very zen thing, almost like crochet where you're, re or knitting when you're doing something repeatedly, you're not really having to think about it. It's very nice. Now, I am still very much a beginner and I've already learned so much. So I think it's going to be really cool to document how my skills with this do progress as I practice this. Um, so like this is really, really exciting. So I'm going to go ahead and finish this patch and then I'll get that top and you'll see a little bit of it. I don't want to bore anyone by it. So I'm going to just do my patch and then I'm finishing that off. Okay, so hopefully you guys are still here or even if you skip through all of that stuff and all of my hard work to just see the result, that's okay. You're seeing the end of the video. That's still views for me, I guess. <laughs> but hopefully you enjoyed that and hopefully you found it as interesting as I did. Um, let me know what you think about that format. Um, I don't really see that very often with like a time lapse and like voiceovers over it. Um, every time I've seen it, I've been impressed with it. So, and this is my first time doing it. So just let me know what you think. So this, as I showed earlier, this is my dad's jacket. This is my dad's jacket. Just your typical woven um, poncho pullover type jacket. He loves this thing. His dog decided that it was going to be a chew toy um, one day. And he decided to just go ham on it. <laughs> and as you can see, as you saw, those holes were massive. And this ended up being such a a larger undertaking than what I thought for a first project but I learned so much so while I wasn't expecting it to be so much to do this was actually a great place to start the holes were on the sleeve and this is what we did now is it perfect no is it supposed to be no. So I literally made fabric. I wove that. I was able to find, I had the essentially similar colors. I was able to do the striping. I wanted it to be a little bit different in the pattern on how I was doing the striping. Also to make it easier to do the loom. And I straight up made that. I love it. Now, did I learn a lot of things? Of course I did. One of the things that I learned, if I'm going to do something that's a, that's a bit a thicker fabric that's got a lot of weight to it like this, again, I will probably do another a piece of fabric on the back because I feel like that would just help reinforce it a little bit better. And that's kind of what I ended up doing. I mean, I, I didn't put a patch, I didn't put a fabric behind it, but you can see this is actually like three or four separate patches and I just overlap them slightly to create their own. I overlapped them a little bit so it kind of helped reinforce it since that was the really big tear. And this rip was like this and it was like awkward shaped. So it ended up making for a really cool effect. Um, another thing, and I actually learned this in a video, but then I realized that I don't have any of these for some reason. I kind of swore I did, but a needle minder comes in so handy because you can stick it on the top of your loom and stick this, the big needle I was using to, um, to tamper down the threads and the wefts or warps. I'm still trying to get used to the terminology. But anyway, that really big, long needle that you see me using to help create that weave, picking it up and putting it back down 
ends up wasting so much time and then like for me I'll pick it up on with one hand set it down with a different hand because I I'm I use both hands pretty frequently I'm predominantly left-handed I do a lot of things I actually do right-handed but like I, I write left-handed so I just by nature I just don't think about it I just use my hands so sometimes I would like put the needle down and it'd be on my right hand side and I'd be looking for it with my left hand I'd be like where the heck is this and I wouldn't put it down in the same spot every time because I wasn't thinking about it whereas if I just had that little magnet on the top as a needle minder I could have just boop and then it would just been right there so that was another thing I learned um I also learned, and you'll see that at the beginning, I was like, I saw all these loops and I was trying to pull them down, which is what you're not supposed to do. And I learned that the hard way. You're actually, you actually take your ending thread and you like thread them through those loops and secure them, which I didn't think about doing. And it makes it easier to do that the closer it gets to the hooks. It gets harder to pass the needle through. So, but if you can get it as taut as you can you won't have as much space for those loops up at the top and it just makes for a cleaner finish once you pull the thread back through um so i learned that and i'm sure there are other things but this is not going to be my only video about doing visible mending i really want to go into more visible mending with um, japanese techniques because i find them very beautiful and I've included some pieces right here, right here. I had mentioned the artist and I'll put their name right here. I'm also going to put their social media down below because I love art. Most of what I follow is some form of art. I love seeing what people can create, especially when it has a lasting impression on me and their work is just breathtaking. The things that they're able to do with a technique that's thousands of years old is just phenomenal. So definitely check them out. This, this has been a labor of love. This has been three weeks of my life. I got sick week two, lost a bunch of time. I've been trying to finish test patterns um, because I have a deadline to meet. So it's just been a lot of craziness. And I really appreciate you guys being as patient and understanding as you have been with waiting for my next upload. That means so much to me and I really appreciate the support and how much this channel is growing in such a short amount of time. Um, it really means a lot to me and I'm so happy for all of you guys to be here in the little craft coven. So yeah, that's all for now, but I do hope you take care. I hope you have a great rest of your day. And if you like what you saw, you can give me some thumbs up. Um, if you want to talk to me down below, I love reading and responding to comments. I try to respond to everything. You'll see all of my videos where I just, I love to talk to you guys. If you hear me, it's because I'm still coming out of having a cold. So I'm feeling much better, but it's really taken me out because I have an autoimmune disease. So things just really bother me way worse than they need to be. So... In the meantime, <laughs> um, hit subscribe if you want to and if you enjoy this content. I actually have um, some stuff below if you end up wanting to support the channel in other ways. Feel free, no pressure. I just enjoy you guys being here um, and being part of the craft coven and our witchy crafty community that we have started. So anyway... <laughs> I'm going to stop rambling. I hope you guys take care. Bye.